This podcast is about the experiences of participants of a two-year Erasmus Plus sports program called Best Practice Sharing of Innovative and Disruptive Hockey Skills. It took place in collaboration with six hockey trainers from Poland, the Czech Republic and Austria. You are going to hear Carolina Patterson, Sabina Blemenschutz and Gino Schilders who will share their experience with this program and talk about what this program brought them and what were the benefits and some of the obstacles related to joining the European Erasmus Plus sport programs. Let's get into this episode right now. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining for joining this uh, this session over here, this podcast, and this we have a video session as well for people who are watching this online. You can watch the video as well. Uh, here we have uh, Sabine, Carolina, and Gino, and rather than me telling you more about them. Why don't we start with Carolina? Tell me a bit more about you uh, and what you do. I have um, I'm, at the moment I'm working for the Czech Hockey Federation as a youth development, but um, hockey has been a big part of my life as a player, you know, as a coach, and also doing bits and pieces um, of hockey around. Nice. How, how long have you been a coach, by the way? Around uh, maybe 15 years. Right. That's, that's yeah, quite started a while. With the, yeah, with the little ones and coaching. Once I you know, started to have my own kids, coaching them and yeah, but by the way, do your kids enjoy being coached by you? Because Gino was my trainer for a short period. That, that was not a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and it's always, it's always better. <laughs> it's always sure. better when, um, yeah, coach them. Someone else coaches them. Of course. Fantastic. Sabine, how about you? Hi. Yes, uh, I'm from Austria. So I'm working for special projects for the Austrian Hockey Federation. One is to get better education for the coaches in Austria and therefore uh, I was very proud to, to have the possibility to go into this project nice. so and I also have a, a long relationship together with hockey because I played as an international player but that's many years ago mm. and then I was a coach I was an international umpire and now I'm only a hockey mom <laughs> Only a hockey well, mom. I, yes. I heard that's I heard that's the toughest role of all of them. Actually, it's the hardest that's, one. That's so, right. <laughs> so, when, so, so when did so you, when, ask my son? <laughs> when did you first fall in love with hockey? I was about twelve years. I started with hockey, so sometimes we say it's a little bit late. But yeah, it. I think it was the right time to start with hockey, and um, I had. Um, uh, yeah, the, it, it was really nice at the time I started because two years later I was called into the national team. Oh, wow. And with already 16 years, I played the Olympic Games. So it was quite a fast start with hockey for me. Fantastic. All of you got such a long history. Thank you for that, Sabine. Gino, how about you? Well, first of all, uh, thanks for reminding that I was training you. I really can't recall that fact. Um, it's a dark page in our history. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's get it out of the uh, out of the family album. If it left you some traumas, here with my official excuses. But it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Um, it wasn't meant to be like that. For, so. for the li for the listeners, uh, Gino is my brother, my older brother. <laughs> so tell me a bit more about your. Tell me a bit more about what you do and how you got into hockey. Well, how I got into hockey? That's already some years ago. I think I started when I was six or seven, played in the Netherlands, um, was playing and training in the Netherlands, and then some 20 years ago, decided to go to Czech. So I was playing here, coaching here as well, also with the national teams, ladies and men's team, and now the last years, I'm working for the Federation, um, as president for the Czech Hockey Federation. So also in this role, I got involved in the project, what we're going to talk about. Uh, so it's, uh, I like, um, to develop hockey and, and to work together across countries and clubs to, uh, to grow the sports. And um, my favorite sport is, is hockey. So we'll talk about field hockey, but in general, I think it has a lot of similarities with life as such. So I would say um, that sports uh, is, is what, um, what got me here. Fantastic. So all of you combined, you must have many, many years. If you, if you add up all the experience you have as hockey moms, players, referees, you have an incredible amount of um, hockey experience, which is awesome. I think if you add that up, that will be an interesting number. Um, Carolina, we're talking about this Erasmus sport project. 
uh, you guys have joined us, you with, with a couple of your colleagues. Um, tell me a bit more about this program. What is so interesting about it? Okay, so this program uh, is about um, six coaches from three different countries, uh, like Sabine from Austria, uh, Czech Republic and Poland. And we team up and went together to a hockey club in the uh, Netherlands, Den Bosch, where we learned and gathered some uh, information and know-how about the best practices um, of coaching, training, or anything to do with hockey. And then uh, we were also able to share it with our coaches, clubs, or anyone who could benefit from it uh, back at home in our countries. Nice. Yep. Yeah, and personally, I went uh, into this pro program like to broaden my knowledge, but I was really interesting to, interested to get the uh, practical tips and hence really how it works in a real life uh, in a country where they are very successful with the hockey. And it was really nice to get that from all the presenters which we had there and then uh, be able to share it back at home with our community. Oh, was that surprising? Because you mentioned you got some very tactical, practical tips. What did, what did, you, what did you want to get out of it when you, when you went into this program? Um, just really really to see how it works, how it works here and what we could maybe get something similar in here, for example, in Czech Republic, what could be adapted. And, uh, you know, for me personally, maybe lots of things for coaching, but then also for developing the hockey in Czech Republic. Yeah, awesome. So Gina, then, I mean, you're, you're leading this, I can see you're leading this with the Czech Hockey Federation. You said you're with the Czech Hockey Federation. Why did you apply? You were the one who applied for this program. Why did you apply in the first place? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I played for Den Bosch, so Hockey Club Den Bosch is my old uh, club. Um, and already for a long time, I was playing with the idea to go back there once because I enjoyed it a lot. And not only as a player, but from the co club culture point of view, uh, I think it's one of the top clubs in in in, in Europe and in the world. And um, I also wanted to share this, um, yeah, this time I had there and, and give the opportunity for colleagues and for trainers here to go there. So I was playing with the idea for a long time to take some Czech trainers there to show and to, uh, to speak with my, uh, my old colleagues and players in the Netherlands who were also now mainly went from player roles to coaching roles and other interesting roles. So, um, but then of course it's also about partly about finances and at the moment, at a certain moment Erasmus. Um, I don't know how, how I got there, um, but, but those two things got together and it was like, okay, uh, these two things, uh, my dream of going there and uh, the support of Erasmus and the thinking behind Erasmus working together uh, brought me there. And then uh, Erasmus is also about cooperation between countries. So I said, okay, well, I want to go with the Czech trainers there, but it also gave the opportunity to link more countries. So I started to look around and ask for other colleagues from other and, uh, federations if they wanted to join. So that is how it all uh, started. And, uh, and Poland and Austria were the first one coming back and say, hey, uh, would be interesting. So uh, they joined the team. And did, by the way, did you know each other before? Before this program, did you know each other? Well, I know Carolina because she's working in our federation. So yes. Yeah. Um, Sabina. Sabina and also Kubi from, uh, from Austria and uh, um, Alicia and Mukas from Poland. Yeah. Uh, at least I didn't. I didn't know them. Uh, now it seems I know them for years, but uh, this is also part of true. <laughs> Sabine is laughing. Do you agree with that? Yes, it's right. I just know his name, so I said, "Okay, it's Chino. I know he's the president of the Czech uh, Hockey Federation, but just know the name." Yeah. I've known him for many, many years. I always tell people that my brother is the president <laughs> of the Czech Republic. That's easier. So, Gino, I also know that you have the title, you have, you have innovation in your title. Now, when I think of sports, a sport like field hockey, which can be seen as quite traditional, tell me the correlation between hockey and innovation. Yeah. Yeah, we have the word innovative and disruptive in, in the title of the project um, because of thinking about what we really want to get out of it. And I think um, what, what Europe and the Erasmus program is about is really about looking for innovation. And um, I'll come in a second to what it, what it means more concrete, uh, but I was looking for, uh, like Karina mentioned, best practices. So things which maybe in the Netherlands or in a top nation, hockey nation might be for them, let's say normal. 
uh, but which could be innovative for us. So I would not say it's not existing in the world, um, but I think a lot of things which some people maybe assume that are normal uh, can be very innovative for other people. So it was curiosity. It was about uh, getting impulses from different people about um, how the sport can be played. Um, uh, so the innovative thing was about having there some um, also some good people on the other side. So a big thanks also to uh, the people from Hockey Club Den Bosch because they have some very skilled um, experienced people with some different ideas on hockey, quite progressive and, and, and disruptive I put there because there are also some things, my aim was not only to, uh, to take learnings there and then to apply them, but also to, um, uh, I'm saying is to, to make people think. And I don't mean that uh, we were not thinking, <laughs> but it is to, to, to get some impulses that you start to think differently about some things. So that was a bit the provocative thinking and uh, quite some of the speakers, I hope and I trust, um, have brought this to the team that they started to think differently about how we do things every day. So um, that is where, mm. where it came from. And talking about speakers, Sabine, uh, can you tell me a bit more about the, the contents of the program? What, is, what, what was some of the content that you enjoyed or some of the speakers that maybe inspired you? Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I think the, as Carolina already said, the content uh, was um, a really good mixture of daily hockey life. So we we discussed s s special technical skills like, for example, the track flick. Yeah, or uh, we heard about the youth development uh, in Dembosch. Uh, we also had um, expanded our knowledge um, about self-regulation. That was very nice. It was mm. really new for us. Yeah, and and also f uh, about uh, we heard something about nutrition, and we also got insights because we were there in Denbosch the first year, so we could hear the pre-game talk of the first men's team of Denbosch. So you got uh, you also got insights you normally do not get yeah because normally you are not you're not there and hear the first man's talk yeah uh most inspired you asked me most inspired i think most inspired i was i was from mark lamas yeah he is really a great speaker and uh, i never thought that um, a presentation of two hours can last only five minutes in the feeling yes yeah so he he was speaking two hours and and you thought oh it's it's just five minutes um and it was really interesting because he also is uh he, he is author of a book called um called uh, winners uh winners have a plan and uh, loses an excuse, an excuse, okay. uh, and it was a nice title of the of the book. I, I didn't know exactly what in. Yes, it was the title was okay. Yeah, uh, and then he made a presentation there in, and it it is it was really great. Yeah, because um, he gave us really good advices, and um, I always have in my mind that he said that he said. Uh, work on things you can influence yes and then he gave an uh, he said uh, data data makes things visible technology uh, makes things possible people make things happen and impossible is nothing so this was, was uh, that stayed in my mind yeah and I, I really appreciated his his presentation Fantastic. Well, he's a hockey legend, first of all. And that's yeah. when you say that he can turn a two hour talk and you give it gives you the feeling it was only five minutes. That means that it was a good talk. And, and yeah. the fact you re, and you remember all the things I think is, is even better. That means he had a good impact on you. Now this year, thank you for that. This year has been a little bit different because of COVID-19. Uh, Singapore was still a bit stuck. We're very limited to what we can do. Uh, Carolina, you guys went what happened COVID? Did you go visit? Was it virtual? This is virtual. What did you do with this, uh, this visit? Yeah, no, we adapted fast. <laughs> and uh, so we had an online session and I think it worked well. You know, it was time efficient. Um, we just got out of bed and <laughs> we're ready. And uh, 
uh, we, you know, sometimes we issued like we had some issue, technolo technological issue, but we sorted them out. It was nothing that couldn't be sorted out. Uh, we planned our breaks as well that we stayed focused. So we covered all the topics. So, um, you know, like the, from the point of view of our, all the topics, that was fine, but uh, it would be nice to see the group because I think um, we kind of work together quite well. And uh, I am sure once we will get a chance to meet up for our official closing meeting, that we will have lots of fun and make up for it that even we couldn't see each other because Meeting in person is slightly different than through the computer. And I get maybe. that. Is, is, is this, go for it. Yeah, maybe, maybe I just add something to this because we, um, the program was about two years and we were supposed to have a physical session in, in April yeah. um, and another session to, to wrap it up. So, of course, for obvious reasons, it couldn't happen. Um, we didn't want to say, okay, it's COVID, so we do nothing. I think there was uh, enthusiasm from all the sides to do something, so we did it uh, online, which for a big part I think worked well. At the same time, uh, we still want to, to meet up and to, to, to have the final session and in that way to close the program. And not only from the content point of view, because we, yeah, we made a commitment and we really want to, 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 to finish it in that way. But I think also what Karina is saying, and I think that's a nice spin-off also just to, to meet up and to, uh, yeah, and to finish what, what, what we started. And, and also think about, not then in the project form, but there are always things after this one as well. So we have asked Erasmus and, and uh, Brussels to, if you can postpone uh, for a few uh, months um, and, and they are looking into this now and we, we will get a reaction uh, if this will be possible to, uh, to do uh, so we can finalize it as, uh, as was planned. Let's hope so. Let's, let's hope this is over with very soon because I'm, I'm getting tired of it as well. So. Gino, you mentioned, since you're talking, you mentioned that this program was all about uh, sharing, collaboration. Um, how did this program deliver that? Because if that's what the values are, that's what Erasmus values are, then how did this program deliver on that? Yeah. Well, at the end, I might not be fully objective, so I think other people have to judge this as well, and especially the people on the receiving end, I would say. Um, but what we pushed hard on and that was the ambition to say okay we gain knowledge and, and like you hear people are using it for their own purpose which is great and at the same time uh, we said okay the aim is mainly to inspire also other trainers and other interested people so um, what we did is from the beginning we went out with the knowledge um, that it's not only for us but that we want to share it with other people so um, we created a Facebook page where we put it on. Uh, there were some seminars uh, which were organized where we integrated these parts. Um, uh, yeah, it is about speaking and influencing and talking about it with, with, with other people. Um, we translated some, some, some books in different language uh, to make sure that that know-how can be shared as well. So from all the subjects, we had an hour or two hour with the experts. Um, all the, uh, we had something like a 25 topics uh, through the whole two years. Those got split by the seven participants. So everybody worked on some three, four topics. So they worked it out in the presentation, of course, partly of the speaker, but in their own words and, 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 and uh, to give their own interpretation to it. And, and those presentations were shared via different channels in different ways uh, to different groups of people to... Uh, to inspire them to work with it. So um, that, that is the way we, it was planned to share and how we want to get it among, uh, among people. And the focus is on Poland, Czech, and in, in Austria. Uh, and of course, also the wider ambition is, uh, we hope that some people also from other countries, um, because also on English and in the local language can benefit from this. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of these presentations can, you know, will be done by, let's say, PowerPoint or something that's in an email. Uh, Sabine, you're nodding, like, what were some different ways of presenting? Because you said you enjoyed, let's say, Mark Lama's talk. I'm sure there's a lot of other contents in there. What were some different ways of how they delivered the information and the content? Uh, yeah, it, for me, the, 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 the first year was nice because we, we, we could be there and we could train there. We could see the people there. We could ask them uh, questions. Yeah, um, um, we could join the trainings there. Yeah, 
so and all all this this kind of non-verbal communication you have yeah uh, it was better the first year yeah the, the second year um, as you heard we we were only online it was okay but uh, it's somehow you hide a little bit about your your computer uh, uh, behind your computer, behind, behind the camera, yeah, mm. and uh, Gino always tried to ask us questions, to, to get input from us, yeah, but we were very relaxed and said, yes, let them do, yeah, so it was more, uh, more to hear than to do something, so the, the better way was the first uh, time where we also where they put us on the field and you tried there some things and you could feel more the hockey than you just just look for the for the presentation or presenters yeah yeah so uh, they tried to 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 give us the content in different ways yeah so they showed us they trained with us they speak with us yes and we we had to learn yes and we learned a lot of there I mean. Well, you mentioned a good point because you're from behind the computer. Can you learn anything about, I mean, I'm sure you can learn some theory about hockey. You can probably learn some, um, some, some, you know, I think you can learn a lot, but there's, there must be very limitation to how much you can learn. I mean, Carolina, can you imagine that I'm going to teach you, or you're going to teach me how to play field hockey from behind a computer. Isn't that really limiting? Yeah, I guess, obviously, you know, there is that, um, as Sabine mentioned, you know, the hiding behind the screen, you know, the kind of non-personal contact. So mm. the first year for that reason was definitely better. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll meet up next time. Is, 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 the, fu is the future of field hockey something virtual? No. Or is it still going to be on the field? No, everyone's like, no, no, that's not going to happen. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, could be. Um, I think, I think it will be. I, yeah, I think it, it. I think it will be both. Of course, we will not go only to a virtual hockey environment. Uh, at least in the coming uh, fifty years, I would expect. Um, but I'm sure that, um, uh, yeah, virtual trainings or that that there will be opportunities to to learn also in that way. But I think for the coming. I think we're still social animals. I think we still need to meet physically. I think we still. I mean, there's a big chemistry behind uh, that part so uh, on top I think there will be some interesting developments in, in sports and then uh, yeah what, what you're asking what you're talking about um, but it will not uh, replace um, at least not uh, when we are here I think uh, on this not point. while you're here <laughs> that's not when I'm here you might still experience it that's right that's right but it, that's that's good to know um, all of you I'm, I'm guessing all of you had a goal going into this program. I mean, Sabina talked a bit about what she wanted. It was that same for you, Carolina? Did you have a specific goal going into this program, a specific objective? I guess specific objective, um, maybe not like a specific one, you know, because of my different roles. I was interested in part of coaching, part mm -hmm. of the development, how they develop their hockey there. So uh, I really did get what, what I wanted, you know, I um, get maybe the know-how, some of it, like just some hints and tips, and then uh, just shows you that um, and inspired me kind of to, you know, serve, do self-reflection um, on yourself all the time and, you know, not to just sit and think, oh yeah, I know it all, but really it is a sport that evolves and you really have to stay on your toes um, to learn and how the hockey evolves that you, you know what you are kind of doing, be better at it. Yeah, Yeah, fantastic. Uh, how, about, how about for Sabina, for Gino, any of you? Did you go into it having, a, having certain objectives or goals? Um, yeah, I was, um, the goal was to learn there. Yes, just, just to hear from a big hockey nation, yeah, how they do things and uh, and maybe to hear things we, we, we do not think about, yeah, so for me, things like, uh, yes, I, I really have a long time together with hockey and you always have the feeling you know many things, yeah, but, um, but especially the topic self-regulation and how they, they deal with, with this kind of doing with uh, already with 12-year-old with children, it was quite new for, 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 for me and I think it's quite new for Austria. 
because often uh, there is the trainer, the trainer say what to do, yeah, and uh, that you leave kids and say just try, yes, and do not correct too much, yeah, and how they they do it uh, in in the Netherlands that that was quite new for me, for example, yeah. So the goal was uh, really just to have uh, more knowledge afterwards, yeah, and that was fine. You mentioned self-regulation. You mentioned that twice now. Is that what you mean when you leave kids figure it out for themselves? Is that what it means yes. for the listeners? Yeah. Yes. Right. So yeah. rather than yeah. rather than controlling, you leave yes. the kids to figure it out. Is that what self-regulation means yes, here? Yes, that's yes, that's that's right. Yeah, not to say. Uh, everything what they have to do to to keep the stick in this way to to push the ball in 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 this way uh, just to 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 tell uh, the kids try and we will and you will find out the the best way yourself that's in a, in a, in a, in a short way to say <laughs> it's what the French call laissez faire just let let them let them figure it out how about you Gino your objectives going into this. Yeah, continuing on self-regulation, the, the aim, and Sabina mentioned it well, and you also, um, uh, it's about making the, the children owner of their own development. Uh, it, it's, uh, I think we sometimes uh, underestimate uh, the power of the brains and the power, power of letting them have the idea, making them responsible for some things and let them find out. And of course, we can help. Um, so, so this also for me was a very interesting topic to go through. Um, for me, the aim was mainly to to inspire trainers when to go there to to, to create energy um, because it's it's uh, it's very easy for me to say yeah I was in the boss or in Netherlands we did it like this yeah? it's, it's very easy to say it to trainers of course and you can be right you can be wrong but at the end it's not very motivational because it sounds like okay yeah just bragging and of course uh, there can be arguments like uh, yeah you have 70 pitches you have the money you have this and this so experiencing it there that was my aim that people I didn't want to judge and to say this is how it should be but i want people to experience themselves um, because yeah my plan in my head is the best plan so when everybody gets something out of that and when they believe it makes sense um, i believe in, in in the power that people really experience it and then take something in their head to say hey this is what i take with me instead of somebody telling what is good or bad so um, the boss is a top club and we had some nice experience there, but it's still, I mean, Sabine will take something with her, Karina will take something with her, everybody should, um, but it can be different for different people. So um, that was my main aim, uh, to see a different environment and to inspire people to, uh, um, to take some things with them um, from, for themselves. And then for S Sabine, who would you recommend this program to? I mean, it sounds like all of you are, are excited. You got something out of it. It was, it was a great experience. COVID was a bit different because of working online. But in your, like, who do you think would this program be really good for? Uh, I, in general, I, I would say to, to everyone who wants to learn to see something in, in, in hockey. Yeah? Everyone can, can learn something out of it. So as it is in their whole life, yes. Uh, just, I think it's it, it's very simple. Yeah, uh, uh, listen to people. Yeah, so we listen there to the presenter. So listen to people. Uh, then ask if you do not understand. Yes, that's that's for me very important. Don't sit there and and do nothing, but ask if you do not understand. Uh, learn and improve. So everyone who wants to learn and to improve his his skills or to improve his knowledge should go there. Yeah. Uh, and most important, if you come back, then act uh, what yeah. you learned. Yeah? yeah. So that's 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 very simple for me. Would you agree with that, yeah. Carolina? So is it is it because so it's not just for coaches, right? It it could be it a, a players, trainers. What do you think? Yeah, just it could be kind of you know anything, any program. I guess if you are passionate about anything and open-minded, uh, I think that's a good way to go into this program. And that if you want to learn from each other, because it wasn't just even maybe the presenters from the Den Bosch, you know, because then within our group also we shared how we do things um, in our countries and because we are a bit smaller nations with the development of hockey. So we, we could see, you know, okay, this is how it's done in Austria, how it's done in Poland. And 
So I would say, yeah, anyone who is uh, open-minded and wants wants to learn and uh, from the experiences of the others, I think it's a great great way to to do it. So anybody with a love for for hockey, basically, right? Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Gino, that's you. Yes. <laughs> if you if you can make any if you can make any recommendation to uh, <clears throat> sorry I started one again, Gino if you can make any recommendation to the EU policymakers for these kind of programs what would you recommend them? Uh, it's my um, I I'm involved in two Erasmus programs and I uh, request another one for the coming years. So based on what I experienced, um, first of all. Um, I, I would recommend to continue because I think it's a great thing which allows uh, collaboration among countries and uh, because a lot of these ideas are there uh, but let's be honest also not always the good ideas are being funded so I think Erasmus as such and, and what they're after I think that is great that it gives you the opportunity because we get some funding of course but it mainly goes to the basic things yeah? we need to re run a league uh, we have children going on and things so which is, which is good, There, the state is helping, but this really gives an opportunity to do something more for the sport. So, um, I think overall my experience, it's, it's, it's a fair process, um, it's, it's well set up, it's well coordinated, you can get support, so those are all the positives. Um, uh, so, yeah, for 90% it's a very positive experience and I like to continue that one. If there is one small thing uh, which I think will help to make it more accessible is, um, is the registration progress. You have to get a number and then you have to fill in, get, it, get some papers there um, in the system. So to, uh, let's say, to, to, to sign up, it's not uh, always so easy. And maybe for the policymakers, yes, because they're used to it. But for people who are, this is not their, their daily bread. Uh, it is not always easy to understand what to put there and, and the whole system. Um, but once you're through there and once you go into a second round, you have some experience, it gets, uh, it gets much better. So, um, and, and I know also that um, Erasmus is, is fighting for more funding uh, for sports. And, and I think this is a healthy thing, not only because um, I've been working for sports as well, um, but I think really that uh, investment in, in, in sports and in children and in moving uh, has such a huge spin-off in the health in general um, uh, in Europe uh, that this is one of the best investments which, um, which Europe can make. Yeah, and I, you, know, you, said, you said health and wellness is not just health and wellness, it's their well-being as well, right? It's more than just physical health. But were there any policymakers involved in this program? Well, if, if you talk about policy makers, I'm thinking about the people who are uh, drawing out the policy, so who are creating the programs. Yeah. Um, so uh, not directly those people, um, but the people who are helping us out. Um, uh, we have a contact, which is Jana Janotova um, from Czech. Uh, she's located in Brussels and she uh, has been a very uh, supportive person to help with, with uh, putting the project together. Uh, clarifying things so it's good to have a sparing partner like that so a big thumbs up to her um, so she was involved that's right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, thumbs up I do it right away uh, <laughs> and the second person once you're in a program in Erasmus program you get a, a contact which is the formal contact so whenever you need some formal um, yeah you have some questions or whatever there's a formal contact to you so in our case that is uh, Mikael Romero who was my contact, who is my contact. Um, so those are the two, uh, let's say, key persons from uh, uh, Europe, Brussels side, who are helping out uh, to make this program a success. Fantastic. And if people want to know more about uh, this program, more about the outcomes of your program, let's start with Carolina. What happened to the outcomes of the program? Is there anything that you can share? Is there anything people can learn about that? Yeah, we have um, set up a group in our Facebook where people can join us and where we have put all the final products uh, of all the presentations we have made. Mm -hmm. um, it's called, maybe Gino, correct me, uh, best practice, <laughs> uh, sharing of innovative hockey field uh, skills. So anyone who would be interested, they could, um, you know, ask requests uh, to join this group and they would find all the 
products here, but also we uh, share them in our home countries with the coaches during the seminars or clubs. Um, so this isn't, this is this is as through the uh, Facebook page or the group. And the Facebook page is an open Facebook group, correct? Yes, yes, it is. Yes. Yes. yes, it is. And uh, um, the long title which we created in the beginning is working a little bit against us because if you would ask me exactly in which order we put the words, I would not be sure now. Uh, but if you put in the word disruptive, if you put in the word hockey, if you put in the word innovation or innovative, and then I'm sure this uh, page will, uh, will jump up. And we'll make sure we leave that in the notes under this podcast and under the videos. You have links of all the important things that we've been talking about so you know where you can go. On that one, if people want to know more about the, uh, the grant, the Erasmus grant, where do they go? Well, first of all, also for people uh, who don't have much experience with Erasmus grants yet, just understand um, there are small programs, bigger programs, but more or less also everybody who is, everybody can do this. So we, are, we, we did it now as a part of the Hockey Federation, National Federation, but it can be also a club. So, and even they promote a lot that it's about grassroots, so also small entities working together. Um, so that people don't think it's non, non accessible for me. So I think that is the nice thing. Um, there is some work uh, involved, of course, um, but there's also a fair chance that you, uh, of course, it's not a guarantee, but that you get the, the grant. So I would uh, like to promote that and, and uh, just go for it. Um, so if you put Erasmus Plus Sports in your uh, Google um, yeah, an application, there's a lot of different sites uh, which explain where to go. And then there's the official uh, site where you then you do the login and you get all the official documents um, telling you how, it's, how it works. So uh, some simple Googling uh, and else people can contact me. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that uh, you will find a lot of information if you go for Erasmus Plus Sports. I will we'll leave that in the notes as well. So people have a link underneath this one. And they can always contact you guys, but can also go directly to the grant. Sabina, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you. going to go uh, kind of my last main question is, if you were to do this program again, what is one thing you would like to see more of? If we do like a version two, what is one thing you would like to see more of? That's hard now, the, the question, because I, I had the feeling nearly everything was there. <laughs> so, okay. um, yeah, I think... That's a, that's a big compliment, yeah. by the way. That's a, that is yes. a big compliment. Yeah. yeah. So I think at the moment, uh, there is nothing I, I really miss at the moment. Yeah, just just uh, for all the people who are hearing, yeah, please share knowledge and learn from each other. Yeah, that, that was the outcoming of, of this project. And uh, I really can't say there's something missing at the moment, yes. Cool. Carolina? Yeah, I have to agree with Sabine. Um, I think just because it was the two years, you know, the first year we got some topics and then also we figure out for the next round maybe what we were more interested in, what we wanted to hear about more. So we kind of um, ask for that. Uh, it got delivered, <laughs> what we asked for. So. It was great. So at the moment, I can't think of anything as well that we didn't cover that we were interested in because we got the chance to say what we would like to learn about. Um, so yeah, to me, that was covered all. Cool. Gino? Um, well, I think it was very beneficial that we were not with a too big group now. So I think that we were with six trainers, I think really helped because of the intensity. Uh, I'm not sure if that is an English word, intensity. Um, so um, what I would say for, for version two, it would be nice to give more people uh, this possibility. Yeah, I mean, when you go with 80 people again, you give the chance to 80. So that would be my only, um, let's say on top, um, but I wouldn't have done it for the first round. So I would have left this round exactly as it was. Um, yeah, so, so that is in fact, that's effective. Give it more chance to other people as well. Um, but I'm happy, uh, really happy with the group which we had. I think there were people all, I think that's what um, you can hear people who wanted to learn. And that is that was for me the main, well, at the same time also the main, not the fear, but yeah, it was about you have to select people, you don't know them. And of course, in the beginning, you have to see a little bit who is who and, and how is the person working. 
Um, but that's also the nicest part. And I'm really happy to say that at the end, we have six people who all contributed to the program. Everybody's a little bit different, of course, and everybody did it in a different way, but that is what you should expect. But there was nobody um, sitting in the back of the room, uh, looking at his phone, doing nothing. So I think that's a big compliment to the, uh, to the whole group. And that was my, that was actually also, if you talk, of course, about content and, and, and about the energy, uh, but my biggest satisfaction was uh, that at the end, uh, people were involved. And of course, uh, as a lead, you have to do some pushing sometimes to get people uh, reminding of some uh, deadlines and other things. Um, yeah, but I hope I did it in a way that it was not uh, pushing for the sense of pushing, but um, yeah, to get everybody feeling proud of the end result. Yeah, I'm making sure everybody is involved. That's what I'm hearing from you, right? So... This was a great, it seems like a really great first try and I love how excited all of you are about this program, which means next time, maybe bigger, maybe different or no, but there is going to be next time, right? There's always a next time. There's always a next time. I don't understand the question. What do you mean? I, this, <laughs> how excited you are about the next version of this. But on, on, on that one, that is as like a final question. Is there anybody you would like to thank? Because you talked about, there's, there's people here, you talked about Ugas, Alicia, there's one other person. Oita. Oita. Um, is anybody you would like to thank before we close this off? Yes, I definitely want to, to congratulate uh, and say very warm thank you to, to Chino. Yes, because uh, for all the leadership he had in the project. Yes, and as he said, he was with, with really a kind cons consistency and persistence yeah he pushed us where he wanted to have us yes but he was always polite he was always uh, with uh, with a sense of humor in it yeah so um, we always thought yes he's right yes <laughs> now I do it yeah so he was he was he has the the, the, the right feeling for the group to push us uh, where in the end, we all wanted to be, yes. And therefore, really, really great thank you to you, Chino. And of course, to all the speakers and presenters who handed over their, their, their knowledge in, 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 this, in those two years. Uh, so very, very great thank you. Awesome. Carolina? Yeah, can I join as well? Uh, I guess I will be repeating uh, Sabine, but uh, the same to me um, is... Uh, Big thank you to the presenters, you know, the way how they share it with us. They were really open-minded and genuine. Um, they weren't really trying to hide anything or to show us how much they know, but they were really there to share it with us. And then a big thank you to Gina, because it is quite hard, I think, to lead, uh, lead the group sometimes when they get busy with their lives and, um, you know, the project needs to be finished. So um, he managed that really well and lead us uh, that we all finished it and uh, did it um, exactly maybe how we all wanted as well. So thank you for that, Gino. And to the group, I think we had a nice group. So it was nice uh, to meet them all. And I hope we will all stay in touch. And uh, if we need to, you know, through the hockey or anything, we will just uh, be in touch uh, for the future. Awesome. Gino? Uh, big thanks to the ladies, but also don't thank me yet because we're not finished uh, yet, ladies. So uh, be prepared. <laughs> not <on> yet, that. <laughs> soon. <laughs> no, we're very far. <laughs> and technically, we might be there, but uh, we will still uh, enjoy some things together. Um, so yeah, first of all, of course, thanks to the to the whole group for uh, joining me with this. It gives a lot of energy, so um, uh, that's always nice. Um, thank Hockey Club Dan Bosch. Uh, for all the people who participated and Hockey Club himself for making this uh, possible. Uh, Claudine, who was involved from uh, the boss side with helping me with some logistics there. Um, also the KNHB, which is the Dutch Hockey Federation. Um, Gabriela van Doren helped us with some things. Um, I mentioned already our contacts, Jana and Mikael in, in Brussels. Uh, and I should not forget uh, my uh, one of my important partners who was always there also to consult and not so much on the technical, but more on the hockey side, which is Tom Pedersen uh, from the EHF, um, where we're teaming up with, and uh, not only this Erasmus program, but we're doing a lot of things together to promote hockey in, uh, in Europe. Um, and of course my family for all the, um, the hardship in uh, Gino being always away and doing always some things for this hockey thing. 
uh, which is there. Uh, and last one, uh, my young brother for uh, moderating. <laughs> this awesome. This is the end of the recording. Should you wish to know more, you can head over to the Facebook page and just type in best practice sharing of innovative and disruptive field hockey skills. I know it's a long title. Go to Facebook and type in best practice sharing of innovative and disruptive field hockey skills. Thank you for listening.